Three weeks until WrestleMania 32. Three weeks until the biggest show of the year. Three weeks to try and figure out how you're going to draw over 100,000 people to that event at AT&T Stadium. Three weeks to piece everything together. Three weeks, frankly, to figure it out. Three weeks to get people interested in WrestleMania. Three weeks to make this feel like WrestleMania is going to be a big, huge deal. It's going to be an exciting, compelling, interesting show. Three weeks and all oh, that shit doesn't fucking matter at this point. I think it was Jake the Snake Roberts that once so eloquently said the WWE was worst wrestling ever. And I don't know if I would go that far. But to me, beyond question, especially watching this product at this moment in time, and in particular this week's Raw, this company has to have the worst writing ever. If we're going to give any new monikers to WWE, it's worst writing ever. I mean, literally, the worst writing I've ever seen in a build-up and a lead-up to WrestleMania in my lifetime. By far. Not even close. It is that bad. Completely and totally inexcusable. Myself and many others, I think legitimately, could write better stories for the road to WrestleMania on a 10-minute shift. I mean, this is how bad this fucking is. And this show was a joke this week. This company is a fucking joke. And WrestleMania 32 is starting to shape up as a joke. Even the three money marquee matches are all starting to lose luster. The three money marquee matches that this show is going to be built off of the backs of, I don't think any of them have an interesting or compelling story. And in fact, they all have stories that don't work for a variety of reasons. But when you look at this show, I mean, it started off a little bit different. You actually got a match to kick off Raw. That's a nice welcome change of pace once in a while. But unfortunately, it's New Day versus League of Nations. And I understand with the New Day, you know, you're at that point now where you don't need to keep going against the grain and fighting it. The people like them. The people want to cheer them. So you might as well give them reasons to like them, and you might as well give them reasons to cheer them because they're not in a top, top spot, so you're not trying to protect your ego and all these other things and your branding and what have you, like with the Roman Reigns. You know, the people like New Day. They have gravitated to the New Day. The New Day have gotten over. They don't want to boo them anymore, so stop trying to force them to boo them. Give them reasons to cheer them. And I understand trying to pair them up with somebody with the hopes that they'll get over even more as the good guys, as the heroes, as the baby faces. Except for the fact you throw the League of Nations in here. What has the League of Nations done as a group to get any type of heat whatsoever? It's that ultimate proof of the ridiculousness of people thinking that turning Roman Reigns heel would automatically work and make it better and make it easier for him to get over the right way. A uh, ding dong dong ducks. No, the fuck it doesn't! Because this company doesn't book villains right either. You look at the League of Nations, you've got four guys here, not one of them could get fucking over as a heel. So the fuck makes you think Roman Reigns would? And furthermore, looking at these guys, these guys have lost multiple times to the New Day, so we decide to reward that, it looks like, by giving them a tag title shot at WrestleMania. How does that make any fucking sense? I get the whole thing of wanting the New Day to be the good guys now, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. I have no issue with that. But Jesus H. Christ, of all the teams, the League of Nations, that makes no fucking sense, especially since the New Day have beaten multiple fucking times, so they get rewarded for losing multiple fucking times, but it looks like getting a title shot at WrestleMania. You want to talk about bootios? That's fucking bootios. And furthermore, what is bootios about this whole shit? I've been talking about it for months. It's not that hard to fucking figure out. You're already having a crash test dummy WrestleMania in the hopes that this will fucking mask a lot of your deficiencies in the show and help this shit fucking get over and hope to fool people into being more entertained than they really frankly are. Then let's go nuts. You've got the New Day. You've got the freaking Usos. You've got the Dudleys. You've got the Dudleys. Fifteen years ago, you had TLC at WrestleMania 17. Do it again! This is splitting off and having New Day versus the League of Nations in a match that nobody's going to give a fuck about. And then the Dudley Boys versus the Usos, which if I've ever heard of a show or a match destined for the pre-show at WrestleMania, that's going to be that fucking one. How could you not figure this out? How could you not piece this together better? It makes no fucking sense to me. And then you look at what's going on with Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar. So, of course, they've got to have Dean Ambrose uh, do the honors clean to God Saturday at Roadblock because that's mightily beneficial for Ambrose's character and Ambrose's story with Lesnar. Now we get to the point, though, where you got to figure out what's next 
for Ambrose and Lesnar, and you got to give Ambrose some type of shine here and something that works. You got to make him look viable. You got to make him look legitimate. And then they do this shit, where it's not like he's backing down, but that now they're making Ambrose about weapons, and he's got a crowbar, and in a lot of ways, acting like a punk bitch, in my opinion. These are like the dudes that talk big shit, but they're quick to pull out their fucking Glocks. You ain't man enough to sit there and fucking try to fist fight somebody. We got to resort straight to the gunshots. That's punk bitch shit. And what Ambrose did here to me, in my opinion, is punk bitch shit. But what is even more punk bitch shit is the Brock Lesnar monster, the dude that blows through everybody, the dude that squashes every fucking buddy, the dude that can't be stopped. Now he's fucking backing down. He can't sit there and go find his own goddamn weapon. He's all of a sudden afraid of Dean Ambrose and a fucking crowbar. Now you've got this big fucking monster and you've got him backing down from Dean Ambrose? To me, this was the story that in theory could work the easiest. This is the story that could make the most sense. This could be the story that was the most viable of the major three from WrestleMania 32 and by as large as a result, produced potentially the best match. But they even stubbed their toe with this fucking story this week. And then later on, they've got Mick Foley giving freaking Ambrose a barbed wire baseball bat. You know, I understand it's a no-hold-barred street fight, even though that's redundant in and of itself at WrestleMania 32. Why the fuck do we need to go there? Yes, it's nice. Ambrose is getting put over a little bit by Foley. But we're a PG product, and yet we've got this dude putting out there a fucking barbed wire baseball bat like he's actually going to fucking use it. And, just, and then we got Ryback taking on Black Ninja Sin Cara. <laughs> I guess the look is okay. But now you're pushing Ryback and Callisto in a U.S. title match. Again, something that seems destined for the goddamn pre-show. Maybe it won't be, but maybe it will be. You've taken Ryback, and instead of when he was actually getting somewhat over as a babyface, following through with that and going somewhere with that and giving people even more reasons to care about him, now you've done a dumb dick character turn that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense other than the fact that he's talking about that size matters. Well, that's fucking stupid. And that's not a reason to hate the guy. It's not a reason to like the guy. It's a reason to not give a fuck. And even with Callisto, if you're going to go with this whole size thing and big versus small, you got to at least give us some type of reasons to care about Callisto. There could potentially be reasons to care about Callisto. But we need to be presented with those reasons, not just, oh, this guy's big, this guy's small. That's enough. Have him fucking have a title match or mania. No, it doesn't fucking work like that. Jesus Christ. Perhaps the stupidest thing of many stupid things that I saw outside of the main event segment, of course, has to be what happened with Dolph Ziggler. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. But even now, I almost felt bad for the guy in a way. Not in a way that I care about him or actually want to cheer for him in any way, shape, or form. But I just felt bad that he was put in this situation and put in this ridiculousness and stupidity. Why all of a sudden now are we hearkening back to Survivor Series 2014? Why all of a sudden now are we giving Dolph Ziggler any type of fucking shine whatsoever? And furthermore, the ridiculousness of all of this. Triple H is God. Triple H is the champion. He is the authority figure. So it's bad enough that he just had to wrestle a roadblock defending his title in an aggressive physical match against Dean Ambrose. Why in the bluest of blue fucks would he want to wrestle another match here two nights later on Raw against Dolph Ziggler? And then they put the stipulation in there that if Dolph Ziggler wins, he gets a match at Mania, any match except for the title, but if he loses, he doesn't get anything. So why in the fuck would Triple H want any part of this? All the while knowing he just worked a match Saturday at Roadblock. All the while knowing that Roman Reigns is bound to come back soon. Why not put him in a fucking match? Why not have him wrestle 10 dudes? In this case, why would you give Dolph Ziggler any type of one-on-one -on -one match where anything could fucking happen? Why would you have him face off against 30 dudes and the whole fucking roster? The stupidity of the authority and the stupid crap that they book on TV is just completely astounding. They have to be the most idiotic authority figures in the history of professional wrestling. Triple H is the champion. Why is he wrestling a match two nights after he fought a title match that he didn't need to fucking fight to begin with? Duh! And then to make this shit so bad and so worse on so many different levels, you know Roman Reigns is coming back. They've got the Ambrose shit out of the way. Now they fucking mind-fucked you and confused you as the audience. So now they're going to try and bring in the conquering hero, Roman Reigns. Whoopee! 
So instead of knowing that you had made the stipulation where if Ziggler won, he gets a match at WrestleMania, and using that as a real legitimate springboard to at least get people maybe for a quick second to fool themselves into thinking that they like this asshole by having him help Dolph Ziggler defeat Triple H, get his match at WrestleMania. No, we wait until Triple H wins because God conquers all. Praise God. All the glory to him. We got to make sure he does that first before Roman Reigns comes out and then the crowd shits all over it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm kind of tired of the crowd shitting all over everything Roman Reigns does because it's kind of pathetic and it's kind of stupid. And frankly, for all those people that say that he isn't fucking ready, frankly, if you look at the lack of big-time talent on this roster, who the fuck is ready? Frankly, if you're being really honest with yourself, it's a bunch of fucking ham and eggers, and that's the truth of the goddamn matter, if we want to go there. This whole notion of Reigns has to turn heel. Well, frankly, fuck, he already is fucking heel, you idiots. Number two, this whole notion that he has to turn heel in order to get over the right fucking way. As I pointed out with the League of Nations and so many other dudes, a heel turn doesn't always mean the right decision. A heel turn does not always work. A heel turn does not always make a difference. And in this particular case with Roman Reigns, just because you would flip him to the other side of the fence, that in no way, shape, or form is a guarantee of any fucking thing working out any differently. Because you can waste your time doing that for 6, 12, 18, 24 months, try to bring it back as a baby face, and the people are still going to resent it any fucking ways. That's how petty and stupid the fucking fan base has gotten today. But here you go, a clear and present example of the WWE and their stupidity. They create a perfect situation to bring this guy back and at least for one night give him a little bit of shine. Give him a little bit of the glory. A little bit of a fooling of the audience into wanting this guy to kick Triple H's ass at WrestleMania. Kick Triple H's ass that night. But instead they wait until after Dolph Ziggler loses. So the crowd is already pissed off because Ziggler lost. And now you're going to throw Roman Reigns on top of that. And that seems like a good fucking decision. That match is going to get booed out of the fucking building at WrestleMania 32. And WWE has nobody to blame but themselves for that. It's their own fucking fault. Everything they have done with this Triple H Roman Reigns storyline since the Royal Rumble has been shit. Complete and total fucking shit. But speaking of complete and total shit, the hits just keep on coming. You've got Sami Zayn versus The Miz. And... Kevin Owens apparently interfering in the match, so that way Sami Zayn can win. Not only do I not want to see these two fuckers wrestle anymore, because I've seen it for fucking years, this is that shit that WWE does that makes no fucking sense to me. You've always got to have the babyface go over on television. You have the heel interfere, and the babyface still fucking wins. How does that make any goddamn sense? How does that get any heat on Kevin Owens? All it does is make Kevin Owens look fucking stupid. Why are you making your Intercontinental Champion look stupid? I guess because the company is fucking stupid. Worst writing ever, but it goes on. This whole shit with Team Bella and Team Bad, why both of those are a thing I still don't fucking know. Team Bella doesn't have Nikki, they've lost the head off the snake. Team Bad doesn't have Sasha Banks, they've lost their head off the snake. But these two teams got more time and more story than Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky. You gave Charlotte a promo and that was it. These teams got more time, so that way you could set up to some horrible fucking story between Lana and Brie Bella, where you're trying to force people to like Brie Bella, and she inherently doesn't have a lot of likable qualities. You know, Daniel Bryan retired, so people are supposed to like her. Nikki Bella is hurt, you know, so a lot of fans don't even like her. So now they're supposed to like Brie Bella. So that way you could have her in a kind of back-and-forth disagreement with freaking Lana, an argument, a few, try to build a rivalry, some heat here on Lana who the WWE has decided to stop focusing on in one way so they can focus on her in this way, building up to what I'm sure is going to be some shitty multi-diva tag match at Mania. But you're trying to force the crowd to hate on Lana when they want to cheer want Lana. They like Lana. They want Lana. You know, the we want Lana chance. So now you've got this girl who the crowd really doesn't care for if they're being honest. You're forcing them to cheer her, trying to, and the... Diva that the fans actually do like, you're trying to force them to boo them. And the whole premise and story here is just fucking stupid. And of course it would be because it involves fucking divas. What else would you expect? You know, you've got the Usos and the Dudleys and all the shit you're doing there. You know, Ding Dong Dumb Dicks, TLC Match, WrestleMania 32, not hard to figure out. And when you did the character turn with the Dudleys, instead of going to that every single week, you'd use them some weeks and some weeks you don't. 
a match that I should care a whole lot more about that I just fucking don't. And I just don't. Way to go, WWE. And then you get to Jericho. He's coming out, and he's cutting this promo on AJ Styles, or shitting on AJ Styles, shitting on the fans and everything else. So, of course, for no particular reason at all, out comes fucking Neville to wrestle him in a goddamn match. Do we have any real association between AJ Styles and Neville? No. Have we established any type of friendship between these two guys? No. Have they had any real interactions on TV that I could think of in any way, shape, or form since AJ Styles came to the WWE at the Royal Rumble? Not that I could think of. So, of course, it makes perfect sense for Jericho to go off on AJ Styles for several minutes for fucking Neville to come out and answer the bell. Just so that way he could eventually get his leg fucking hurt. And he's WrestleMania and he's gone now. Good job! But the whole premise of this again is so goddamn stupid. These guys, Chris Jericho, AJ Styles, have already wrestled three fucking times. Now you have went all in on Jericho turning heel just so that way these guys can wrestle again? Just so that way can AJ can go over Chris Jericho again? I mean, the epitome of literally fans could have booked a better match on a 10-minute shit is this right here. You could have had AJ and Chris Jericho team up right after the Royal Rumble because Jericho was impressed by what he saw. And then they have a tag match, maybe at Fastlane. And then after that, maybe if you do a heel turn with Jericho, there you go. They've never faced each other one-on-one. -on -one. WrestleMania, you've got a special attraction. Or you sit there the night after the Rumble, Chris Jericho says he was impressed with AJ Styles, da da da, skip de skip and whoop de woo, and he wants to know what would happen in a match, so he'll see him at WrestleMania. There you go. Or you have AJ Styles work a short program with The Miz, because you know The Miz is one of the few guys that can actually still get legit heel -y. He's one of the actual few legit heels that the WWE has, so of course they utilize him in the wrong fashion and capacity to try and get over other stories that nobody gives a fuck about. Whereas people can naturally give a fuck about booing The Miz. You could have used him as a nice transitional feud to bridge the gap, to handshake feud, to introduce AJ Styles to the audience, culminating in a victory for AJ over The Miz at Fastlane. And then afterwards, Jericho comes out the Raw after Fastlane and challenges AJ Styles. Don't even have to do the heel turn. Don't have to do a lot of this shit. The point is, you could have done so many different fucking things other than the fact of diving right fucking into it and then backing off and then diving into it even fucking more. You took something that could have been special, that could have had significance, and made it feel like just another match in the crowd. You made it feel like it was nothing special and nothing different about it whatsoever. It feels like everything else you would get on fucking WWE's product today. And my God, imagine my surprise at that. <clears throat> but then... And i got to get some agua for this one because we topped the cake here. You know, the whole premise of Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker, if Shane wins, he gets control of Raw. If Taker loses, nothing happens apparently. Hell in a Cell, WrestleMania 32. You know, the whole premise of this as much as anything else is you had to have a match for Taker. Had to have something. Nobody on the roster was in a good position where they could actually work with Taker and you could make it work. So in comes Shane McMahon, and you hope that you can get by in 15-plus years of nostalgia pops. And that's exactly what this whole thing has been. But at some point in time, as is always the case with anything involving McMahons on TV, you know the storyline continuity is not going to be there. You know, frankly, there's not going to be much story there at all anymore. But you were hoping in this case for Shane McMahon and The Undertaker that you were going to get something. Now look, there are different ways to make a story work. And sometimes with certain stories, you don't have to do a lot. Like with The Undertaker versus Sting, all you literally would have to do is have those two face off in the ring one time and not another thing needs to be said, not another thing needs to be done. It's Undertaker versus motherfucking Sting at WrestleMania. Everybody gets the story. All you have to do is just build on the awesomeness of what it would be. And to a lesser degree with Undertaker and John Cena, if you would have had that match here, which you would assume at this point was the original plan for WrestleMania 32, it's Undertaker, it's John Cena. Honestly, you don't really have to do a lot with that either because it would make sense because people would get it. It would be a big attraction. It would be something that's never happened at WrestleMania. What would happen in a match? These two haven't wrestled each other in years. What would happen? Who's the better man? The leader of today, the leader of so many years, the face of the franchise now versus the face of the franchise for 25 damn years. The story works in its simplicity. You don't have to do a lot, but you got to do something to piece together Shane McMahon versus Taker. 
Why the fuck does Shane McMahon want control of Raw so goddamn bad? Why is Vince McMahon trying to stop Shane from getting control of Raw so goddamn bad? Why would The Undertaker basically be Vince McMahon's hired gun, his mercenary in this case? And we keep hoping and wishing and wanting for us to get some type of explanation, something that pieces it all together. And newsflash, we're not going to fucking get it. And the interactions with Shane, I mean, between the bitch-looking th throwdowns that he has in terms of his fist, my God, you make the product look like shit. <laughs> the taker's going to swing, and I'm going to miss. Oh, my God, Christ almighty. This was supposed to be the match that in a lot of ways was going to save WrestleMania. This was going to be the match that had the people maybe the most curious about what was going to happen. Because a lot of people probably think, legitimately so, that Reigns will be Triple H. Not a surprise there. A lot of people think that Lesnar's going to beat Ambrose. Not a lot of surprise there. This was the one match that was the wild card of the three. This was the one match where you truly didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. This was the one match where you had so many possibilities about what could happen. You're telling yourself, for all you know, fucking Austin could come out and fucking stun The Undertaker and help Shane McMahon win. He could stun both of them. You could have none of that shit. You could have fucking Shane go off the top of the cell. You could have him go through the cell. You could do any number, number of goddamn things here. And they just do nothing. They have Taker choke slamming, Shane throwing ridiculous looking rights and lefts, and it's just terrible. And to top it all off, what makes it so terrible and ridiculous is you have this whole main event segment and nothing was really accomplished. Nothing truly happened. Except for you're establishing that The Undertaker is a big fucking badass who we still don't understand why he would even be doing this for Vince McMahon. You're not even appealing to the fact that this is no gives a fuck taker and it doesn't matter. He'll take on anybody and beat them all. We can't even get that explanation or that justification. The one thing you could have done that would have actually made sense. The one thing you could have done that could have at least pieced this together somewhat and gave us some type of a semblance of even attempt to having a fucking story was to go to the most logical place of all in this fucking match, which was for Vince to make himself the special guest referee at WrestleMania. And we didn't even get that. Your three money matches for this show and the writing for all three of them sucked dick this week. Everything else on the show, the writing for it sucked cock this week. What in the bluest of blue fucks does this company think they're doing heading into their biggest show of the goddamn year? Ding dong dumb dicks! This sucked! And you are validating those previous fears from months ago that WrestleMania 32 was going to fucking suck because there was absolutely nothing, and I emphasize again, nothing, nothing, nothing that you could take away from this week's Raw and say in any way, shape, or form gives you any type of real hope or optimism for the crap fest of WrestleMania 32 that is to become. Other than the fact that you're going to get fooled because there's going to be special stipulations and this and that shit and that will fool you into thinking the show is a whole lot fucking better than it is at this point. How could you be so bad? I mean, so bad. Worst writing ever on the road to WrestleMania. Everybody involved with this fucking product should look themselves in the mirror this week and fucking slap the shit out of themselves and then look to the right, slap that person, look to the left, slap that person too. Shame on every fucking buddy. It is not that fucking hard. And this is not even a nitpicky thing. This is a common sense thing. It is not that fucking hard. Everybody involved with the WWE should be ashamed of themselves because this was a fucking joke this week. And this whole path of the road to WrestleMania is becoming quickly a fucking joke. you got to give us something. And it's like they don't even care. Or even worse, they don't even know how bad it is. But don't kid yourself. Don't try to fool yourself into thinking something else. This is the worst writing ever, arguably, in the history of WWE, especially on the road to fucking WrestleMania!